Welcome to Electron Line. Then here's another example of how we have to add the forces up together in an equilibrium position. Here we have a bracket. This could be attached to a bridge or attached to any sort of uh, object that has to be anchored down. We have a force pushing in this direction, so this is under compression. Think of a beam under compression, and this is being pulled in this direction, so assume that to be under tension. And then we have an anchor right here where we can pull a force in this direction, pull a force in this direction. So in order to keep this whole thing in equilibrium, what do the two forces need to be equal to in order for nothing to move? Let's say this was not attached to something, we want to keep it in equilibrium, what should F1 and F2 be equal to? And again, we use a principle that the sum of the forces in the x direction must add up to zero, and the sum of all the forces in the y direction must add up all to zero. All right, so what we need to do here is first of all determine the angle between the two forces, and if this here is a 55 degree angle, and this is a straight line in this direction, and this is perpendicular right here, then we can assume this to be 35 degrees, because if we draw this, ang draw this line straight up here, then this angle should equal to this angle, and yeah, let's just go ahead and draw it like that, so that those two angles have to be equal to one another, therefore 35 degrees. So what we need to do now is find all the x and y components of all the four forces acting on this bracket. So uh, these two forces are straightforward because it's straight down, it only has a y component. Here's only an x component, but for this force and this force we need to find both the x and y components. So let's use a different color here. So here we'll go ahead and draw F2 in the x direction. And here we'll draw F2 in the y direction. So what is F2 in the x direction equal to? Well, notice that this component right here would be the opposite side to this particular angle. So we're going to have to use the sine of 35 degrees. So this is F2 times the sine of 35 degrees. And again, don't worry that this is the sine in the x direction because it turns out that way we're using this angle and putting this component over here. It'll be opposite to the angle, therefore we use the sine. F2 in the y direction is equal to F2, therefore times the cosine of 35 degrees because it's the adjacent side to that angle. Okay, using a different color, let's use green. Here we have to find this component right here and this component right there. So that would be equal to, uh, that would be Y component. Huh, what angle do we use here? Well, that's a good question. Let's say that this here is our 35 degree angle. Because this angle will be the same as this angle, will be the same as this angle. So therefore, this here would be 700 newtons and that would be adjacent to the angle times a cosine of 35 degrees. And this here would be 700 newtons times the sine of 35 degrees. Again, because this here, this component here would go up there, that would be the opposite component of the angle, so therefore we use the sine for that. All right, looks like we have everything set up. Now let's go ahead and with a calculator, calculate these components. So 35, take the cosine of that, times 700 equals, that would be 573.4. So this would be 573.4 newtons in the y direction. Over here, 35 times the sine times 700 equals, that would be 401, 401.5 newtons in the x direction. All right, so now we have those two components. Let's go for these two components. 35, take the sine, that's 0.5736. 0 0.5736 times F2, and over here, see 5736, that's correct, and 35, take the cosine of that, so this would be equal to 0 0.8192 F2. All right, now we have all the X and Y components, now we can go ahead and try to solve the problem. Okay. Sum. If all the forces in the x direction add up to zero. Let's find all the forces in the x direction. Well, we have this one right here, which would be F2x. And it's positive because it's acting to the right. Then we have this force right here, which is also positive because it's acting to the right. That would be 401.5 newtons. Sorry, take that back. <clears throat> the 400 newtons is to this one right here, so that would be a plus 400 newtons. The 401.5 newtons is the x component of this force right here, and it's acting in the negative direction, so it would be minus 401.5 newtons. 
And then finally we have, let's see here, we have f2x, we have this one, we have this one, and this one does not have an x component, so we have all the x component forces, and they're right there. Okay, simplifying this, we get 0 equals f2x minus 1.5 newtons, that means f2x equals 1.5 newtons. All right, that's not a very big force. There it is. And since F2x can be written as this number right here, we can say that means that F2 times 0 0.5736 is equal to 1.5 newtons. So therefore, F2 is equal to 1.5 newtons divided by 0 0.5736. And what is that equal to? 1.5 divided by 0.5736 equals, that would be 2.6 newtons. So now we have a value for F2. All right, what about F1? Now we're going to sum up all the forces in the y direction. So the sum of the forces in the y direction will add up to zero. And first of all, we have this force right here, which is a positive 573.4 newtons. What else do we have? We have this component, we have this component right here would be minus F2y, minus F2y, and then we have this component, F1, and of course that's what we're looking for and it's acting in the negative y direction, so that would be minus F1. All right, now F2y can be written like this, and we can bring the F1 over to the other side. So we have F1 is equal to 573.4 newtons minus F2y, which would be F2, or actually, let me go like this. It would just simply, that number would be minus 0 0.8192 F2. And I put the F1 on the other side. And since we know what F2 is equal to, this right here, we can say that F1, is equal to 573.4 newtons minus 0 0.8192 times what F2 is equal to, which is right here, 2.6 newtons. And working that out, we get 573.4 minus 0 0.8192, 0 0.8192 times 2.6. And so F1 is equal to 571.3 newtons. And there you go. So there's F2 and there's F1. And so if we apply those forces, 573.1 newtons in a downward direction and 2.6 newtons at this angle, the whole bracket would stay in equilibrium without having to be attached anywhere. And that's how we do that.